and I'm extremely excited right now to have uh, a very special guest on. His name is Nathan Amaral, and he is a marketing and branding and lead generation expert. Uh, for over a decade, he's helped many people in the real estate uh, industry and entrepreneurs and business owners uh, achieve more sales, uh, make more money, generate more business, get more clients and more leads. So I really wanted to get someone who is really dialed in with this to help people generate more leads, specifically you know, clients that want to uh, buy or sell a house or even, even your small business owner that's just looking to make more money for their business and get more customers because that's really the bottom line. Um, I met Nathan, I would say, probably over a year ago. He started providing some of his professional services for a friend of mine, Sue Nelson, and he's also uh, helped a lot of other very seasoned real estate investors and people that are extremely reputable in the industry of real estate. Uh, Donald Trump, uh, Larry Goins, uh, Zach Childress, Alan Cowgill. I mean, the list goes on and on. Um, and people that are associated with the Rich Dad Poor Dad series. I'm sure we, we all have that book. Um, but yeah, Nathan is very, very knowledgeable and he's he's extremely intelligent and savvy with with the aspect of sales and just getting more customers and clients in general. So I'm, I'm extremely uh, privileged and, and honored to have him on this call. Um, he's an extremely valuable individual to know and to hear him talk. Um, you will learn so much in this next half an hour, 45 minutes probably, than you will at any weekend seminar or uh, or what have you, or maybe even like he's a, a walking college degree, I think. Um, so yeah, so he's, uh, like I said, he's uh, he's a notch burner himself, he's an author, uh, he, he has his own uh, foundation where he helps uh, underprivileged children in Uganda, it's called the Fearless Education Foundation. I was extremely flattered when I discovered that. Um, so that just tells you a little bit about about him, about the fa the fact that now he's at that level where he's established and he's actually giving back to the kids because he's achieved that level in his life of financial freedom. He helps other people do it as a living, obviously, and now he actually has his own foundation, which was a it, which is amazing. It's it'll 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 if you look it up on YouTube, you'll you'll shed a tear when you watch it. Um, so what he's going to do today is he's going to share some tips on how a real estate agent or small business owner, entrepreneur uh, can really just get started off of just from ground zero, uh, you know, with marketing and establishing a brand for yourself. Uh, now I'm a real estate agent so I was really compelled to start this um, platform to try to help other people because I really struggled when I started as a real estate agent, you know, I took the classes, you know, uh, I studied, I got the license, I went out and got a broker. Okay, now what? Now I spent all this money. I'm already over a thousand dollars in the hole. I don't have any business, so I was given a couple of websites, and then we all go and we just set up the Facebook page, right? Okay, now what? We think that if we just build it, they will come. No, that is the <laughs> furthest thing from the truth. And Nathan is definitely going to expand upon that in the next few minutes. So I, I really am so excited to have him here on this call because he is really, not to be cliche, but he just pulls back the curtain and gives it to you. And the, what you're going to hear this man talk about is going to save you uh, hours and hours and dollars of frustration and heartache and just spinning your wheels in the sand trying to generate leads and get business and customers because if you don't make any money in your business and if you don't find any find anyone that's that's going to um, you know you can help buy or sell a house or if you can't find anyone that that's going to buy your products and services then your business dies and as a real estate agent you're a one man CEO you are your own business and that is that's the, the the bottom line is you consistently have to get customers and clients, um, you know, diligently, and it has to be a, a never-ending quest to do that. So that is really what he's going to help us with here on the, today. Uh, now I kind of gave I, I gave a brief synopsis about you, Nathan, but can you just kind of just tell us a little bit about yourself, about how you get started in all this, and how you really became, you know, just a, an incredible expert with the, with with marketing and, and lead generation. Sure. Well, thanks, Chris, for that, man. Uh, when you were when you were talking about you know introducing this person, I was like, man, where is this guy? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, thank you for that. I really appreciate it. Uh, well, the you know you talk about getting success in marketing and lead generation and sales. 
uh, you know, getting a cold prospect in to become a customer, and that simply is a lot of failure, a lot of testing, a lot of trial and error, and you know, to uh, you know, to expand on some of the things I've done, it, it comes a lot to relationship building and also testing and trying a lot of things. I'd say the number one key that <clears throat> I've learned over the years is self-education, always learning, being a student, getting coaches in your life. That's really important to make sure that you, um, you know, to grow and, and, and never just learn something once and that's it. And then you... And then you just die out. It's old news, actually. Uh, a lot of people who maybe, and, and this is nothing against college. I have a, I have a degree in business, but, you know, uh, you don't just want to go through the system and learn uh, whatever type of degree, and that's it. No, continually study and learn up and, and be in groups and get coached and be involved in things. That's really important. Uh, you know, and, and I guess I couldn't help but laugh when you said, you know, people start off as a realtor or any business, really, and, you put up the Facebook business page because it's yeah. hot and, and everything right now, and, and you, or you have your website and you put a thousand dollars into that, and then all of a sudden, you know, you know, <laughs> if you build it, they will come. It's very not true. Yeah, um, it's you're absolutely right when you said that. It's not just build it and there you go. You have to actually have a marketing plan and 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 use sales strategies to get people to buy and move in. Uh, into your business funnel and to actually close deals. That's just the way it is. That's uh, okay. There's there's no other way around it. Yeah. All right. So uh, with that being said, um, what's the very first uh, action item that a person needs to execute uh, with respect to? Now you know we're joking about Facebook and websites, but mm. I mean, uh, as far as resources, uh, essential tools, is there any type of a formula? Perhaps a magic formula. That can that's templatized that someone can fill out uh, that would really just guide someone step by step and uh, so they can go right out maybe after after they finish watching this call they can just go and just take action immediately uh, on this so they're just not it's not like Calgon take me away um, right. I think your average person is just like oh God I gotta write a business plan and wow. okay. Um, and, and and my my brokerage is Keller Williams. Uh, they do provide coaches. They're very good about that. Um, the issue that I had was my coach would say, "Okay, you got to go, you know, door knocking, uh, you know, call for sale by owner, uh, people expire listings, you know, Facebook is good, and then you know, set up a blog or you know, oh, call family and friends." So you're basically cold calling and just dialing for dollars. And that doesn't really gel with me as a person. Um, and everyone, I'm a very outgoing individual, but everyone has their different personality types. Right. Um, so that kind of lead generation, and that that is all lead generation, door knocking, Ab absolutely. You know, cold absolutely. calling. But I, I just cringe at the thought of just interrupting someone with my marketing during the day and saying, <laughs> and saying, hey, I know you're at work right now, but, would you, <laughs> but do you know anyone who's looking to buy or sell a house? And yeah. then you know sometimes people would just they'd be so mad because you interrupted You're them. You're interrupting them, right? Yeah. Yeah, they were furious, and I killed the relationship right out of the gate. And they were like, you know what? Um, you know, I've had people call me up cursing, leaving me voicemail messages, take me off of your list. Mm. Um, and it's really it's just it, the, the massive uphill struggle yeah. to try yeah. to find a customer, or a client in 2014. I said mm -hmm. to myself, there's got to be a better way than this. This yeah. just can't be what people do. And there's a lot of successful business owners and entrepreneurs that, you know, they do they do their lead generation in the morning where they, they just, you know, they, they get on the phone for a couple hours and they, you know, they go through the cell phone or they're constantly prospecting. Um, for me, I'd rather throw myself off the top of a, a building than to, than to cold call people <laughs> just because I respect I, – I know I know what it's like to be interrupted. You know, we all yeah. check the caller ID, and we're like, oh, what the heck is this, 1-800 number? No, I'm, you know, and they just let it go to voicemail. Right. So right. um, I know that there are some and, – and, and, and I've seen uh, many of the, the extremely helpful resources and lead generation um, technology that you've implemented – you know, for for Stu uh, currently, um, you know all the different things that we implement there. So, uh, your personal it, people have to have some type of technology. But what right. would you recommend? Say, okay, if you're, so if you're going to systemize it, if you're just going to make someone's life easy, okay, what's the very first thing a person needs to do? Okay, all right, uh, I I heard Nathan. I love the guy. He's he's great. 
I'm going to do this right now. Well, what, what should a person do? I mean, is it is it go out and set up a Facebook page, or is it go out and get a website, or, or just sit down and write the plan? Uh, what sh what's the very first um, vital action item that a person should do? Sure, that's a great question, and it's actually a very loaded question because there's a <laughs> lot of things to do. There is. Well, you're good, lot. so I put you on the spot. Uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Um, but one of the, the one of the most important things that you mentioned, Chris, is this: is yeah, you need a plan, and you need to write it out or do a mind map and what that looks like. There are very there are various forms of of lead generation. And that can be, yeah, social media and any one of those platforms, whether it's Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, doesn't matter. Right. All that it is is a medium. Then you have email marketing. You have um, pay-per-click marketing. You have yep. uh, SEO marketing. You have the yellow pages, right? Yeah. They're actually still making those yellow pages, but it yeah. still works. Then you have, um, you know, and there's a whole host of them. But the important thing is this. This is what's really important. Um, when you're starting out, and it's so true, everything you said is so true, a lot of people experience this, is, is simply this. You have to identify and know your target audience so well. So mm -hmm. as a realtor, you have to identify um, where, what, who is your target audience? Are they um, residential buyers? Are they commercial buyers? Are they, um, are they first time homeowners? Are they relocations? Right? Are they just relocating to a different part of town? Um, are they people with bad credit, good credit? Do they have money right now to put for a down payment? Are they current? Where are they currently living? Are they living in an apartment? Right? Are they living with family? Right? Th these are all important things because once you identify your target audience, and that means, or also known as your avatar. Now, I want you to just imagine for a moment you take this one person. You're going to help one person. That's it. You're going to help one person. I'm going to show you how you're going to multiply that effort here in one minute. So you find, identify who that one person looks like. What type of situation are they in? Again, are they, where are their eyeballs going? Are they living at home? Are they living in an apartment? Um, you know, what, are, do, are they married? Do they have kids? What's their average income? Once you identify this one key person, then after that, what I want you to just imagine is I want you to imagine that you, as soon as you identify this key person, is I just want you to like lean over and look over to their shoulder <laughs> and imagine one million people behind them. Okay, the reality is the more clarity you get on that one key person, know that there's a million more people just like them. But if you try to get multiple people in all these different situations in their life, then your marketing message is going to be skewed and you won't attract the right customer. And that's the most important thing. The most important thing is that your marketing message is for one particular person in a particular situation that has a particular problem. Right? They have to have an issue and a problem. And their problem may be, so let's just say your target audience is someone who's renting out an apartment and the apartment's getting too small and they're thinking about expanding uh, and moving into a home. Right? So now their particular problem is maybe their apartment's too small. Maybe they're dissatisfied with living in the apartment. Maybe they're tired of hearing the neighbors upstairs banging and loud music. Right? So I'm giving you that <laughs> very descriptive, very descriptive analogy. Why? Because when your marketing piece goes out, it should resonate with that person saying, hey, are you tired of hearing the neighbors, uh, you know, blaring their music? Are you tired of, of smelling the smoke of, of other people smoking? Um, you know, are you, are you tired of hearing car alarms go off um, multiple times throughout the night uh, in your apartment complex, right? Um, those are questions to ask your market, right? And or if you want to do more of like generic, I want to say generic marketing, which I got a marketing piece yesterday from a realtor group, which is really powerful, which was simply this. Um, you know, there was a, I saw this piece that we brought it and had a meeting and they said, what do you think of this marketing piece? And it was basically targeted to um, apartment owners. And it was basically saying, hey, here's a payment that's not too far from your payment right now. You know, it's almost like making it affordable. It's like, wow, yeah. I could, you know, you could switch from apartment to a house and bam, there it is. No big deal. So, again, a very, very targeted marketing piece. Um, and, and with that piece, you know, targeting people who are in apartments to go to houses. And then you have to identify if it's, you know, make it easy for your customers. That's the strategy. Make business, uh, you know, make, make it easy to do business with you. Um, and, and make sure that you always go above and beyond is really powerful. So to answer your question, um, first identify your target audience. Identify who that person is, one person, and know that there's a million people behind them that you can help, and you'll have business forever. 
you won't have a lot of business if you're trying to help everybody. You won't have business if you're trying to help everybody in different situations in life, and, you know, different income levels. That's not going to work. You identify the target person and you create marketing around that target person that solves their problem. That is how you get more and more business and the same type of client. The unique thing is, and here's where you can what's called leverage, is when you identify your target market and then that, that same person keeps coming in right that same type of person keeps coming in and becoming a customer then you can create what's leveraged in system how you you can actually sales team become a broker and have other sales agents and then you can train them and say hey here's our target audience here's our target customer this is what we have these are their these are the questions they usually have here are their problems here's how we, here's the answers to their common questions does that make sense chris that is like you hit the nail right on the head like five times mm -hmm. um yeah. So, uh, and you really you're so you're so far ahead of the curve. You answered like three of my next questions in one shot. Because <laughs> um, I really wanted to know what does it really take to to be successful in lead generation, and what are some of the the pitfalls and the biggest mistakes that people make. And I think that you 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 slam dunked it where you said you try to be everything to everybody. Yeah. And re realtors are the epitome of that. Like I said. Yeah. You know, um, you know, they're so they're all over the map. They go to the, mm -hmm. the chamber of commerce, and then you know they want to help people that are in foreclosure, and they want to help uh, you know for sale by owner people, and then they call up the yeah. expired listing, and yeah. then they're trying to help people that just want to rent, and then you know, it, so they're just totally Everywhere. scattered. Yeah, scattered. Um, yeah. And it's it's stressful. And, it, and Chris, it, and Chris, that's not just realtors though. That's a lot yeah. of small business owners. That's a lot of people who are independent contractors. They're just trying to get a lead from anywhere. Let me me tell you this what's really important about the cold call what I'm about to share with you will change your way of view of cold calling or prospecting th that you will totally love to do it you said you'd rather fall off a building let me give you one strategy <laughs> you're gonna want to write this down and uh, because this will totally change this your viewpoint of cold calling or prospecting than ever before get ready so here's what it is is when you're taught when you're talking to someone whether it's a family member a friend um, you know, maybe in a, a current prospect, maybe you're at a Starbucks or a cafe and you're just, you know, chilling and you're talking to somebody and they're like, oh, what do you do? Hey, right? You got to have your elevator pitch ready, right? Mm. You're, 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 you're saying who you can help. But here's, here's the strategy about prospecting. Whenever you're talking to someone, you're never talking about them. Never. You're never saying, do you, right? You never say, do you, like Uncle Sam, right? He's got that finger pointed, do you. I want you for that. <laughs> you never do yeah. that. What you do is called deflection. Okay, and again, it's you're looking at the next person behind them, which is your target customer. When you're prospecting, the when you're prospecting, the first person that comes to you, it's not them, it's the person behind them. Okay, so what that means is this: is that when you're talking to them, you say, "Hey, I'm calling just a quick few minutes, whether if it's over a phone or face to face." You always say this: you say, "Do you know?" Right? Do you know someone? And then you identify your target audience. Do you know someone who's currently living in an apartment who's looking to move into a single family residence, three bedroom, two baths, whatever it is you have to offer? Do you know someone? Do you know? Right? You do that because mm -hmm. now this relieves all the pressure off of you saying, are yeah. you interested? Or have you been thinking about? But all those things, right? You're taking the pressure off that person that you're talking to and ask, you're basically asking for a referral. Okay. Yeah. Now, now, um, the, the more you incorporate that, the more referrals you're going to get. And also, when you're working with that prospect, and now you have a potential customer, and maybe they're buying a house from you. Now you have a customer. What you want to do is say, customer, now that I've provided this service for you, you happy? Great. Yes. Can you think of two or three people that are in this? We're in the same position as you right now that want a home. Right? But again, it's back to the same position. You have to be so clear about who your target audience is that when someone comes to you, if you so if your, your target audience is someone who lives in an apartment and trying to move into a home, or okay, if that's the target audience, then you have to, if someone comes to you and says, oh yeah, you know, I'm looking to relocate from uh, you know, this side of town to you know, uh, whatever, another state, you have to say no. You have to say no. If they come to you with a different scenario or, hey, yeah, do you, do you list uh, commercial buildings or, or uh, you know, d residential, maybe two apartments, you know, a, a double family, a duplex, a triplex? You have to say no. That's not my specialty. But I know someone who does. So when you, when yeah. you send a referral to someone, 
maybe you can set up a referral program or something like that um, in, in your business yeah. um, that you can get compensated on for a referral. Uh, it's called yeah. paid leads uh, that you can get. And uh, if not, uh, and that's not available, but set up something where you can say no. You know your exact client, and you only work with them. Yeah, I'm actually doing that right now. Uh, it's funny that you mentioned that with Kyler Williams. Just a 20% uh, referral fee uh, because I used yeah. to do residential because I was so frustrating with Legion. I said, I said, okay, well, I'm just going to uh, switch over. And Well, I met Sue, and so I said, okay, I'm, I'm just going to rebrand myself, and uh, I want to start doing commercial. So now people come to me. Because yep. I'm looking for apartment buildings, people want to rent or something. I say, no, yep. I don't do that anymore. And then yep. I just refer it to someone in my network, and I still get That's paid right. either way. There you um, go. That's perfect. But the um, I think a lot of times, uh, what it's actually doing is, and I, I'm I'm kind of hoping my big vision is to really go uh, more of like an inbound marketing type of direction, where it's you know people would come to you, and you kind of you mentioned that a little bit, where you know people yeah. might come to you at know, Starbucks or whatever. But um, I don't know, maybe just for some of these people where they're actually still sticking to their guns with the cold calling method, um, I'm just curious, would you, would you be able to clarify a little bit? Um, now, you say, well, you're saying, okay, well, do you, do you know, you know where you kind of, you actually got a hold of them, mm -hmm. but I think, uh, how, how can a person break the ice where um, they say, okay, you know, you're, you're, you're dialing for dollars. You say, okay, I'm going to call this person uh, for sale by owner, 123 Main Street. They don't know me from Adam, but I'm just going to call them. Okay, and they actually pick up the phone, which is, if you can even get that, it's like a huge achievement. Yeah. And so the person's all frustrated, like, hello, or they may or may not even answer. But but it's like, hi, um, uh, th this is this is Chris Tracy from Keller Williams. Uh, how are you doing today? I'm busy. What do you want? I'm trying to get ready to go for. I'm trying to get ready to go to work. I'm late. I can't. Yeah. I can't talk right now. I can't talk right now. I got to bring my kids to school. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> call me back later. You know, it's yeah. just you really. Try, like, how do you how do you warm these people up and just build that rapport and and get a hold of them because they they got they put the wall up and they're resistant yeah. before you even because they already know you're trying to sell them something or oh god and, pe and people actually there's a there's a big stigma. A lot of people don't like real estate agents. They're prejudiced against them. They think that they're dishonest, and they're like, oh, all this person just wants to make money off of me. They don't do anything. All they yeah. do is open the door and put a sign in the yard. Yeah. God, they're, you know. So how, how can a, uh, especially a brand new agent, how can, sure. a, how can a person separate themselves and say, listen, I'm coming from contribution. I'm a good guy. I want to help you. Um, just give me a couple seconds of your time. I know you're busy. Uh, you know, so what's the most, um, or maybe I just answered my own question, but what's the best way um, to to break that ice when you, when you got a total stranger on the other end of the phone line and they actually pick up the phone uh, before you get to that next level uh, of hey, do you know that person that's you know over your shoulder? Um, you know, uh, before you get to that level, how do you really? Uh, engage them like right out of the gate when they when you got them on the phone and they're 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 kind of annoyed uh, or just downright frustrated and they're just they're talking to you and they're probably on the verge of cursing you out because they're stressed about who God knows what you know so so how do you really warm these people up um, when you first when you first got them because you only got I imagine you probably only got about five seconds and then they're just they may or may not hang up on you you know or, or curse you out. You know, um, yeah. you really you get some some at least in the real estate uh, arena, some of the clients they can be very challenging because they've had bad experiences. You know, um, their previous their previous agent has failed them. They tried to sell before and they couldn't. You know, many of these people they're trying to uh, they, they don't want to pay the commission or and there there's specific scripts for all these types of clients down the road. Uh, but I'm just wondering from a sales perspective. When you've got that really difficult or that really challenging client that is just in a bad mood, how do you how do you befriend these people right out of the gate and make a good first impression? It's a great question, Chris, and I know a lot of people struggle with this. There's yeah. there's an answer, and there's two forms of marketing that we're talking about here right now. Yeah. And the strategies are inbound marketing and outbound marketing. Okay. Right. Now inbound marketing is where you have people calling you saying, "Hey, I heard you did." You, know, you list your house with my friend Bob. Oh yeah. And I want you to do my thing. It's a referral, right? Inbound, right? Yeah. Uh, the outbound marketing is cold calling. And the, uh, listen, there's nothing wrong with cold calling. It's a skill. 
everyone feels this way, not just about realtors, but anybody who's trying to offer us a product or service and try to sell something, right? We're all salespeople, the yeah. reality is. But the, uh, uh, you know, that person is going to get some pushback. But now if you're doing cold calling, again, if you're doing a cold call, that means you're, you, what's important about cold calling is having that targeted list that targeted list. Yeah. Don't just call random people, right? right? Don't just whip open the phone book. But if you have a targeted list, you must approach that person with a cold call with a solution. That means you have to give them something. And I call this a GOV. It's called a gift of value. That means you have to offer them something up front in order for them to talk to you. Let's go back to the apartment situation real quick. Yeah. So you have someone who is living in an apartment you know what? I want to point something out real quick. There's yep. um, right here, right now, actually. I'm at, actually heading out to the lake here. going to change up and going to go spend the day on the lake here. But if you can see behind me, I don't know if you can see this guy. I can. Yeah, guy. it looks like you got yeah. some nice weather there. Oh, it's absolutely beautiful right here on the lake, right? Lake style living. So you see that guy back there? He's kind of like fishing. You see that guy? Yeah. Yeah, there's a guy back there. He's fishing. And so it is actually, uh, there's quite a few people. But there's one guy. I've been watching him fish a little bit. But the reality is this. The guy has a lure. How do you catch a prospect? Mm. Oh, yeah. Swimming, swimming in a lake. <laughs> so basically a, a lead magnet. Is that, is that where this story is going? You got it. Yeah. Right? Now right. the lure, yeah. he throws, throwing out the lure, attracting the hungry prospects. The prospects who have a problem. What's the freaking problem? They're hungry. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's the problem. Your prospects are hungry. So now... You have someone who's living in an apartment, find out what the problem is, offer them a solution first. That may be uh, maybe an audio, uh, a, 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 something to read. How, you know, understand that someone's biggest challenges and what their fears are uh, about their current situation and make it easy for them. Make it easy. So if someone's living in an apartment, maybe they think they can't afford payments, uh, you know, for a new house. Maybe they're afraid that they're not going to qualify for a mortgage. Um, maybe they don't know anything about how to deal with the best realtor and anything about it. You know, you can't assume because when you assume, you make your you make an ass out of you and me. <laughs> you sure do, <laughs> right? Especially right. in real estate. So, especially in real estate, right? So the reality is, is that you can't assume that your prospect knows everything. So when you're cold calling, let's say I'm going to use this example, when you're cold calling your target market, you want to start the conversation with a GOV, a gift of value something that they need. So you're calling a prospect who's living in an apartment and say, hi, is this Joe? Yeah, this is Joe. Hey, Joe, it's it's Chris. I'm going to use your yep. name for now. Hey, it's Chris. I was calling because I have this, um, I have this book. I have this video. I yeah. have this audio that is helping people just like yourself move from an apartment to uh, a new home and still not maybe change your payments, get qualified easily, um, you know, dealing how to deal with a realtor, whatever it may mm. be that there is like that. Um, they have a fear, they have a challenge, and you're giving them new information and educating them at the same time. I like to call it educational marketing, right? So you're helping them, uh, you know, bring in new light, new information. That's a GOV, bringing new information to the client, giving them information. And then you're saying, would you be interested in this? Other people like yourself in your neighborhood or in your community have been taking action on this. Would you like me to send this to you free of charge? Okay. What you've done now is you've offered something for free, free of charge, and then you're giving them something of value. And then what they're going to do is say, well, yeah, sure. Well, who, you know, who are you? They may even ask who's your name. <laughs> who are you? You say, well, you know, I'm Chris. I'm actually a, 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 real, a local realtor in your market, and I'm helping other people just like you go from an apartment to a single-family house without changing their um, – without, you know, increasing their payments, uh, getting helping them qualify for a, a, a loan or for a mortgage through our partner program. It's one of our qualified mortgage brokers, whatever it may be, your lines, and you say – um, then you use that GOV to get your prospect, one, to pay attention to you, two, to say yes, that they want it, and then you deliver it. And then you just, after they get them, after they, you send them the GOV, right, whatever that may be, whether it's an ebook or something, an audio, a video that helps educate them in their current situation, yeah. you follow up with a phone, another phone call. Now you've taken a cold lead to a warm lead, 
what a potential prospect. And I'm telling you, I guarantee you, Chris, that when people do this on a regular basis and lead with value first and a gift of value first, they, you will get endless business. Then you can go from, a, if you're just stepping out from a cold business to a warm lead business, from warm leads to hot leads and only get hot leads, where people are calling you all the time to do business with you. Chris, to this day, even just today, I just got out of a meeting, gonna head out to the lake here in a bit right after we're done here, and I'll tell you what, people have referred me, just got out of a meeting where people referred me to somebody else because they said, you need to work with Nathan. It was a hot lead, and, and what did this client say? How can you help me? And I said, well, this is what we can do, X, Y, Z, boom, boom, boom. And you know what this client, this prospect said, this, pro this hot prospect said? We need to start this next week, let's go. Nice. That's it. Within a half an hour. And that's because, uh, you know, from my experience, is you have to learn to cultivate your market, know exactly who, you work, who your target audience is, because there's a million other people out there like them. Yeah, definitely. Oh, wow. Uh, that is so money, what you just said, because that thought process, a lot of agents, and it's tough when you got to pay the bills and you're hungry. You know, you got the rent check coming up, and you know you're like, oh, you know, you, got, you your kid needs braces or whatever the situation is, and you're like, wow, I need, I really need a closing. You know, I'm call, I just got done paying the MLS and the board dues, and yep. I just got out of my class. I mean, you're in, you're in a good thousand dollars before you even get a closing. Yep. Uh, realtors are really starving entrepreneurs. It's really what they are. Yeah. Um, so, what would you say the, what's the biggest challenge with all of that? The, the, as far as lead generation, um, now. You know, writing ebooks and you know giving value—that—that's—that's that's a beautiful uh, well, approach. Yeah, let me let me. And I'm sorry to cut you off there, but let me—you yeah. don't have to write the ebook. You can actually give something away for free. Somebody else already created. Yeah. You don't have to recreate this stuff. Right. There's a lot of other free ebooks that other people. If it's an ebook or if it's an audio training that someone else did, this doesn't mean you have to be the creator of it. Right. It's just something. It's a gift of value. That solves their current problem. Yeah. Okay. And to uh, to answer back to that question of you know starving realtors that are just getting started, they put a thousand dollars in their business and now they need. Well, listen, if you are scattered, you're gonna get scattered money, mm. right? If you're not targeted, you're not gonna get targeted money. You need to be so focused, and I guarantee you, if you get so focused on the exact market that you are shooting for, you're gonna get money a lot faster than you would if you were trying to just get anybody. Because when you get anybody. You get nobody. And when yeah. you have someone so targeted, someone that exactly needs your product or service, you'll get tons of business. Yeah, and and um, I am so thankful the fact that I met you and actually had the opportunity to fill out the magic formula and the GOV formula for myself sure. so that I can uh, streamline my strategy and get focused for myself. So I highly recommend those two things. Um, some of it, some of it is kind of like you know we, we've we've heard it before, but you've got it so templatized and easy for for someone to just sit down, and you basically took like this whole conversation, and it's like on a two like a maybe two or three page document where it's like you know what's the person's biggest pain point, you know mm -hmm. so on and so forth, right down, and the GOV uh, strategy that you just described. Where you know the person can say, "Where well, you're going to give them something? What's it going to be? A video?" And yep. it's all just like A, B, C, one, two, three, dint, dint, dint. Because yep. if you try, if you try to figure out all this yourself, you know, I mean, it's just it's just too overwhelming. I mean, sure. because you know, as a small business owner, so that is just beautiful. You, you, um, you know what, Chris? This just reminds me of a how simple business is and how sim how much how complicated we can make it. <laughs> you know, people yeah. can make it. Right. This reminds me of when I was in Uganda. I was in Uganda for a year, uh, basically just having a good time on a sabbatical and being with my wife. But um, the what this reminds me of is the people who would sell in the street as a business, right? They were selling their, you know, maybe it was batteries or, or shaving cream, shavers, or t for food like tomatoes and, and <laughs> mangoes. And right, the reality is, is what they would be saying while people were walking by is they were looking for their target audience. Right? They were looking for people who were buying mangoes, the people who were buying shavers. They weren't just, no, don't get me wrong. There were some people, watch this, there were some people just trying to push you on it. Like push. You see those people just, hey, hey, you need and putting it right in front of your face. Like, <laughs> hey, 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 I have this. And those people didn't buy it. You're actually like, oh, you're too pushy. Right? Like whatever. I don't need yeah. it. Right? But there were some people, which I loved, who would call people in. And that's what you want to do. You want to call people into through your marketing. Right. And I'll never forget this one time there was this guy 
who um, didn't have anything in his hands. It was very unique. This, this is what caught my attention. And all he was doing was asking questions. He was kind of like on this like stone, uh, round stone. It was like about maybe two feet off the ground. And all he was doing was to calling in people by asking questions. And the questions were something like, he was selling clothes. So he said, are your clothes too small? Do they wear out easily? That's what he was saying. Do you find that your clothes wear out easily? Do you, are, do you find like your clothes are getting holes faster than, all, uh, than others? And then he would make a comment and say, um, tr come see our new line of clothes that X, Y, and fulfills the problem. And then it just got people, <laughs> yeah. I couldn't believe, like people would go up to him and say, hey, hey, where is, right? So now the prospect went, hey, hey, where is that? Where is your store? Right, because he wasn't having his product right there. He was like the spokesperson. And he said, oh, our store is right over there. And he'd point in that direction. So he was asking questions but talking about problems. And the people would go to him. Right now he's actually calling the target market to him. So they have to come and ask him. And, and they would and they'd go up to him and they'd say, oh, where, where is your store? So now you, have a, now you have a target market. And every person that walked to the, to the storefront the other person knew exactly their issue, right? Your clothes weight, uh, fading too quickly, holes in them too fast, whatever it may be, right? Target market audience. So wow. again, I share that with you because, of course, all it is is a skill. Everyone can learn it. No one is born a salesperson. That's such a myth. Uh, you know, no one has the <laughs> talent, skill, and ability. You have to yeah. learn these skills and you have to practice them daily. So would you would you say that that's probably the biggest uh, pitfall is just generally people can't get out of their own way and they lack focus and they're all over the map trying to be everything to everybody yep. and um, as far as a challenge or a big some hurdle to jump over it's just getting dialed in and focused and say okay you know do everything that we just got we just discussed get dialed in and yeah just focus I would say is probably the best way to describe it that Absolutely. is that right there that that was that was money okay yeah. so um, I don't know. As far as uh, goals, now you, you mentioned earlier about someone should sit down and do a plan for themselves. Uh, how should a person uh, map out, um, you know, a strategy as far as the next 30 days, the next month, uh, your short-term, long-term goals? How does a person, you know, carve it all out for for lead generation and and, and set goals for themselves so that they can uh, take action on stuff? That, that's a great question. You know, goals are really important. Uh, let's just. Uh, oh, we got some motorcycles popping up over here right now. I don't know if you can hear me. Uh oh. Okay. <laughs> till they till they shut off their motors. Um, being right here by the lake, we got you know some people uh, you know getting ready with their boats and, and whatnot. And I got my friends just chilling down there. Um, but you know the uh, there we go. This um, is uh, this is South Carolina. You're calling from, right? Yeah, it's actually Lake Wiley, and it's uh, Lake Wiley is North and South Carolina. So um, if you can see that in the background, that's North Carolina, Charlotte, North Carolina. Oh, nice. Right there, yeah. So, uh, and there's just a little bridge. So I'm actually right in the middle of North and South Carolina uh, right now. And, uh, Beautiful. So the, um, when it comes to goal setting, um, there's a, an app I highly recommend to everyone. It's called Wonderlist. And I think it's just a marvelous app because you can – share your list with other people, you can add notes, you can add pictures to your goals. That is one of the most important things that I recommend to people is, you know, when it comes to setting goals for realtors, um, is one, you have to know how many people you're going to prospect. Have the goal in advance before you even, just don't randomly show up and do it. Have right. it in advance. So if your goal is to, you know, you prospect, you know, 100 people, and you say, you know what, I need to have, I need to prospect 100 people, how many conversations do I need to have? Not how many dials, or how many people do I need to talk to? How many presentations do you have to do? And a presentation is simply however long that is. It doesn't mean it's an hour. It could mm. be 10 minutes. But it's basically right. a conversation where you get to talk to your target prospect and tell them what you do and how you do it and how you can help them. Okay? So um, the, uh, you need to identify how many people you want to contact. You need to identify how many presentations you're going to do and meet with people, and, you know, whether it's phone or face to face. Yeah, and yeah. then you need to identify also a monetary goal. How much money do you want to make, right? As well. And then what you need to do is every day ask yourself, what can I do to get one step closer to my goal? What can I do today to get one step closer to my goal? When you do that and ask yourself that, it's just going to motivate you every day, every day. You just start working on it. Check your results every week, um, every week, and then follow up that with monthly. 
One right. of the most important things is reward yourself with a prize, a reward, when you r reach beyond your target goal. So if you have a goal of, you know, closing three, um, you know, three uh, deals in one month, if that was your target goal, but you actually did four, then when you hit four, that means you went above and beyond your goal, then you reward yourself. And how you reward yourself is just take a percentage of the total amount made. Let's say you make, you know, five, let's say ten thousand dollars. You make ten thousand dollars from those four deals. Then you take, let's say, three percent of that, or whatever it is. I, I recommend anywhere between um, three to five percent. But you take anywhere between three to five percent of the total amount made, right, profit, and you go and celebrate. You reward yourself. And the reason why that is, don't reward yourself on your target goal. That means if your goal was three, you don't go and reward yourself for doing three deals because you just you hit your goal. No, 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 no. That's like showing up to the gym and eating a cake, right? <laughs> yeah. It doesn't work. No, actually, the, the, it's, you reward yourself in the stretch. You reward yourself like if you show up to the gym every day and you just only did three reps, just three reps, that's it. You would just be able to do three reps all the time. But actually, in order to build the muscle even stronger, you have to go from three to five reps, five to ten reps. Yeah. 10 to 20, 20 to 30. You just have to keep building up. That's the stretch. When you, when you achieve your stretch and you b reach a bigger goal, that's when you reward yourself. Does that make sense? It makes a lot of sense, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's that's awesome. Um, all right, so as far as like um, the next big trend in lead generation, what do you, where do you see the future? I know we talked about inbound marketing and using lead magnets and uh, there were some great strategies that you mentioned about, you know, with the GOV formula, giving giving your target audience, giving them valuable things that can help them in their lives. Um, I mean, as as just the future in general, where do you see uh, lead generation going towards? Uh, I know you said that you know prospecting and cold calling is still a good thing if you use it effectively. Um, but I don't know if because I know that you have you have your finger on the pulse of marketing and branding and sales and business. Um, just wondering if you if you foresee anything coming down the the, the pipe, uh, like I said, any any big trends in lead generation or, or or where you see the world of lead generation going, you know, in in the years to come, or is it are we just still going to kind of stay on, on the same track here? With uh, you, you, you know, I'll tell you what, that's a great that's a great thing. I, you know, the reality is mediums will change, but the principles don't. The foundational principles do yeah. not change. They're foundational, they're principle, they're embedded into human nature. So that doesn't change. What It's always constant. Um, however, the mediums will change. Yes, they will, such as the introduction of email marketing. Right, That was an, a different medium. Then there was the introduction of social media. Um, but I'll tell you what, my recommendation is this. A lot of people jump onto the social media bandwagon and think everything's going to happen on social media. Uh, in my opinion, to anyone that gets started, is the more, is the more time spent on social media, the more time wasted um, because in, in my strong opinion is that if you don't have a marketing plan, a plan of action, a, a, a marketing funnel, uh, and you go into an entertainment chatter environment, the best way I can put it is, and this was actually not me speaking, this is actually from a few of my friends and experts in the industry, one of them being Terry Belcher and Dan Kennedy, and um, they say this, you know, social media is simply this is picture you go to a networking event, right? You're networking, like a cocktail hour, networking. Everyone's just hanging out, right? And then you show up to the networking event with business cards, and you're trying to sit down with people and, you know, do deals right in during the networking event. That's exactly what people don't like at networking events, where you're just kind of like <laughs> hanging out, right? Yeah. Cocktail hour, social hour, right? It's more like, I don't want to say networking event, but it's more like, Picture going to like what do they call those chamber of commerce, oh, you know, God, yeah. night meetings, and and you're just kind of like hanging out, right, and chilling. Uh, well, the reality is when you try to close deals at those events, people are like, what are you doing? Like, no, let's exchange business cards, exchange contact information, and then we'll meet next week, right? That's typically how it goes. Right. Well, well, that's the same thing with social media, but a lot of people get started in business and they're trying to get people out of a social environment and pull them into, you know, or sit them down into a. Uh, to an environment of closing a deal. The reality is you can use social media, don't get me wrong, but you better have a marketing funnel ready to take them out of the social environment, the cocktail hour, right, the hanging out hour, social 
networking, right? And pull them into a, for a next appointment, pull them into an appointment setting outside of that environment. Right? right. And then you can talk about problems and how your product or service can help them. And that so, circles back to, I don't want are you done with your thought? Yeah, go ahead. Oh, and that circles back. I just wanted to connect it for the people listening or watching where you're talking about the guy fishing, you know, yeah. using that lead magnet. Yep. You know, maybe it's a little like a little something free that you're going to give people because you want to give them something valuable. Absolutely. So when you when you talk about the funnel, that lead magnet, the guy fishing, trying to start the relationship at the very beginning, that's the that's where the funnel starts. Right. Um, right. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. And and um, you got to remember with social media, you're only connecting with people. So it usually starts with your friends, your family, your initial con whether you're giving them your contact list from your email. You know, contact list, address book. You're you're only starting with people, so then you have to go and network with people, right? Again, but you're still in a networking environment. Okay, there's right. a process to that. What you what what the best strategy to do is have a marketing plan, have a lead funnel, identify who your target audience is, and we've seen this now with um with like Facebook marketing where people are trying to create audiences and lists, and that's what you really need to do. You need to only target your target audience and list to people who need your product or service. Right. Beautiful. All right, uh, Nathan. I think we're kind yeah. of reaching the the clubhouse <laughs> turn here. Yeah, absolutely. Um, do, you have, get, do you have any? All right. Okay. Um, do you? Can I just? Uh, can I have your ear for five more minutes? Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Uh, I just wanted to know if you had any final words of wisdom, just in conclusion, um, for for this module. Uh, with with everything being said, I know you you provided so much content. Um, I can't wait to go back and watch it myself and listen to it again. Um, any any final words of wisdom, at all? Well, I think my my final words, which I usually leave this at every uh, you know interview that I do online or offline or on a stage, you know, speaking to people, is simply this: no matter what the business opportunity, no matter what you're involved in, the most important thing to do is take action. Yeah. Okay. And the way you do that is you take ask yourself, what can I do today to get myself one step closer to my goal? And you need to take action on exactly. You need to take action on exactly that next step of what you need to do. With if you're not taking action on a consistent basis, dance with fear. Dance mm. with fear. Dance, understand that fear is the only is the identifier of your true passion. Fear is the identifier of your true passion and goal. So once you know what your goal is, you're going to be confronted with fear. There's no such thing as like eliminating fear out of your life. Now, what you can do is manage your fear and dance with it, hold it close like you're doing a waltz dance, right? And understand it, embrace it, because that fear is going to give you the power and the momentum, because nothing will happen unless you dance or face your fear and move with it, because yeah. you have, that's how you break through. So that's my words of wisdom. No matter what industry you're in, and you're starting off as a broker, or you're starting as a real estate agent, and you're just getting started building your, maybe you're starting off with your first client, maybe you're trying to go from 100 clients 100 customers to 200 customers, no matter what it is. Maybe you're a broker uh, starting off with uh, you know, having some new agents. The important thing to know is that you're always going to be faced with the challenge of fear and the unknown. The important thing is just keep going at it because the only way you learn from experience is you've got to fail and make some mistakes. Uh, that doesn't, whoa, I don't know. Bugs on me, sorry. I'm not good with bugs. <laughs> um, but uh, I think I ate that one. <laughs> But the important thing is, is that you face your fear, you learn from the mistakes that you have, uh, that you that you make, and then you continue to move forward and break through them. That's the most important thing. Speaking, I love that so much. Speaking of moving forward, um, can you just tell us about um, how you help people with your products and services? And for anyone that that wants to know more about you, and obviously all the magical things that, that you provide, where can people go to find out more about? You know your uh, awesome products and services that, that you help people out with uh, regularly. Uh, for example, you know the magic formula and the, sure. the GOV formula, and you've got all this awesome stuff. Where, where can people go to, to to learn more about you and what you do and how you sure, can this, help? Well, this is what I recommend uh, for someone to, to start off and get to know some of the things that we talked about today. Is go to thefearlessmillionaire.com. Thefearlessmillionaire.com, and that's where they can get um, the GOV um, report, the free re uh, the, the release. Um, they can get the GOV report and learn how to use GOV's gifts of value in their business. No matter if they're just starting or they've been in business for a while, it's been implemented. It's been proven for small businesses, large businesses, multi-million-dollar businesses. 
it doesn't matter. It works for all of them. Um, and uh, that's where they can get that information uh, and learn from that, uh, the GOV formula. So it's the fearlessmillionaire.com. It's basically a site where I uh, have been consulting and helping people get to a million dollars faster in their business. Uh, and those are one of the strategies to help people get there faster. Awesome. And then the, the, the magic formula too, where it kind of identifies where a person is looking, you know, you've got your 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 target uh, customer, you know, all their pain points and all the different sure. the thought process that you know you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, absolutely. They well, can the get magic, that on the website too? Yeah, well, actually the magic formula is something I actually give to my private clients, my clients that come on board. And I don't recommend that up front when someone first meets me, uh, you know, uh, in, in the industry, because but it is very, very powerful. You're absolutely right. But if someone goes to thefearlessmillionaire.com and starts with the GOV formula, and then we'll continue from there uh, with the magic formula. Oh, and, and I, I highly recommend that people do that, because I have gone through both of those, and they're very, they're very quick and simple, step by step, you know, uh, right to the point. And they, they get you stream, streamlined, and they've helped me already tremendously. Nathan, um, uh, thank you would be an understatement at this point. Um, yeah. I cannot thank you enough for being on this call. I think that this hour has been um, extremely uh, action-packed with valuable content and knowledge and wisdom and experiences that you've collected over the years. And if, if people just listen to this tutorial alone, I think that they will walk away with just incredible information. Um, I, I am in forever in debt to you, Mr. Amaral, and I look forward to the next time that I could be uh, honored to be on the same Google Hangout with you. And uh, thank you very much. If there's anything else that you'd like to say. Um, thanks, thanks, Chris. I just, I just appreciate you, uh, what you're doing and how you're helping people and giving of your time, talent, and treasure to help other people because that right there alone is what will help grow your business. And you've identified that. And uh, so anything to be a part and help uh, you know, a fellow entrepreneur grow their business to help other people get to a million faster, I'm all about it. So, yeah, thank you. Thank you for what you're doing and helping other people. Awesome. Uh, thank you so much, Nathan. Uh, I will see you on the flip side, as Sue Sounds says. Good. And thanks, everybody, for watching this. That concludes this uh, module, and uh, I'll see you in the next one.